don't be an asshole. Spell it out. I know A-S-K-H-O-L-E. In this transactional world that we live in sometimes, yeah. uh, it is important to save your asks. Yeah. Not being an asshole is not being this one-sided. I'm Rhett. And I'm Brandon. And we're, we're the, the House Dads. Dads. Because we're dads who sell houses. But we're also husbands, business owners, sports freaks, Christians. Friends, marketing nerds, TV show bingers, and so many more things. Like so many of you, we're just trying to do it all. We're trying to do it well. And that's what we're here to talk about. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of House Dads. Got a special one in store for you today because we got a special guest here, our guy, Miles LaRue. Miles, thanks for being here, man. Man, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, been a long time coming. Who's, Rhett and I. Who's nervous? Yeah, it just you look. <laughs> I'm nervous. Rhett and I have been talking about <laughs> guests for a while, and you know we wanted to put out some content to like, hey, we're gonna be here for the long haul. Um, and so you know, it took a lot of negotiating with Miles' people to yeah. get him here today. I had but to talk uh, to like ten different people to get to yeah, just his beeper. We yeah. finally got to him, <laughs> and uh, here we are. No, I'm kidding. Miles is. Uh, Real as they come, and I think he's going to add some value. That's why you guys are here today. But uh, I, I don't know Miles super, super well, but we do go kind of a little bit farther back. The first time I met Miles was uh, we, we host a student conference, and uh, we were looking for an MC, somebody that could uh, get these kids fired up. And, uh, do you and remember also, this, Miles? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, did it, I did it a few years <laughs> yeah, in a row. Yeah, okay. and, and I'm not even exactly sure how the connection was made initially. Yeah, I but I think the only thing I knew about you before we got you on this deal was little finals week. Mm. Come on, that's what I knew you as, Come on. bro. And then they're like, "Hey, let's set up a meeting." I remember we met over at Perkins Row, and then uh, the rest was history, bro. And look, Miles did like we had a couple different MCs before for the student conference, but he on the spot came up with like these hashtags for these students, and they were just <laughs> wild and insane for the conference. And look, like our social media blew up. Like, there you dude, go. Just a genius, man, and uh, just it was, it was crushed fun. it. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but you did great. Still don't. Still don't. <laughs> and, it, and, and it was just like, hey, man, can I have some giveaways? I'll never forget backstage. He's like, can I have something that I could just throw? So we'd give him stuff to just throw out to the kids. And, Hype, man. But mm-hmm. even today, you know, we don't get to talk as much or whatnot, but every time... I meet somebody, I feel like uh, we've got a couple degrees of separation where the people that I know always know you somehow, man. And that yeah. just goes to show like, you know, your network and who you are and things like that, that, you know, everybody I know basically knows you one way or another. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's we're, awesome. We're man. Glad to have what, you, uh, what year was little finals? You remember like, yeah, we started in uh, 2010, 2010, uh, and it's just in front of a MacBook. Yeah. recording some joke raps on Love facebook it. Uh-huh. and it like wouldn't upload we did it like time after time and they're like all right we're gonna give up on this let's try to record it on the computer and then upload it to you know this thing called youtube <laughs> and because uh, so that's funny. all we had was facebook and youtube mm-hmm. and so uh we put on youtube shared the link woke up the next morning had seven thousand views Bro. we thought we were gonna be superstars was Bro. it really that quick oh yeah overnight it was one night. It's still there, right oh it's very much there yeah we'll put the oh, link yeah. in the comments we have for, for to, people right? and there yeah. was a, there was multiple Oh yeah, so there there were different iterations. You know what's what happened, and what's hilarious is that after we did the first one, the next semester came up, and you know students are asking, "Hey, when's the video coming out?" Uh, so then we turn into like this Fast and Furious franchise, where yeah, just kept, bumping kept them putting out, out new bro. ones out. That's awesome. Like we just never found the rock, you know. So yeah. it didn't it fizzled. Uh, yeah. But no, we had a lot of fun, created a lot of good. Just it was good, clean fun. Yeah. Uh, and what the cool thing for me is, uh, even in a client facing role now, where a lot of people, you know, clients will hear of us and maybe Google my name or Google our firm. Uh, there's nothing on the internet that I'm ashamed of, right. even from college. Right. So I'm great. I'm grateful for that. That's good, yeah. man. Um, that's really good. And so that's a. Uh, and we had a lot of fun. Like I said, the guy that did the videos with me, we were both on the drum line together at LSU, uh, and just had man so much fun centered around that. Met a ton of people I never would have met. Yeah. And still to this day, my wife calls it the look. Yeah. Like somebody will say, "Man, man, I know you from somewhere." That's right. And it's like. <laughs> I did YouTube yeah, videos in college. Like, yeah, we were, we were in college at the same time. And so, from pencil with yeah. It. <laughs> so, uh, I am a B list or maybe C list rapper. Nah, B list sure. rapper. So, I don't Dude, know. You also put together one of the best Harlem shakes yeah. that I saw too. That yeah. was solid. That was funny. And I think the cool part of that, and that maybe speaks to what we're going to talk about, is just like, uh, Many people don't know I was already out of LSU at the time. Oh, that's right. So I'd already graduated, I mean, yeah. moved overseas, really? spent six months in Israel, and then came back to that's Baton wow. Rouge. And the week after I got back, we did the Harlem Shake. And for me, that was a cool, that's like a chapter in the book probably of just like, 
kind of a God thing of, man, this is where you're supposed to be. Yeah. This is where your influence is. Yeah. You know, I've, I've planted you here, you're rooted here and yeah. this is where I want you to be. That's good. And, and in the form of yeah, a ton of people just showing up for a random That's video right. and then I think it, you know, Push past half a million views or that's something. Incredible. So cool. Yeah, that's confirmation so. showing like, hey, you got the connections here. Yep. I built yeah. your integrity, your character here. Yeah. So it's like, so it was, it was fun. It was yeah. a good time. That's really. Cool. So we've so, had we've had some fun YouTube moments for sure. And speaking of timeline, I was trying to figure out like when did did you and I get to know each other before all that? Oh yeah, it was yeah. way before. It right? was it was um it was maybe a year before we went to Mexico. Yes. on a mission. I knew trip. where it was. I just wasn't yeah. sure the timeline, but yeah, yeah, Mexico. I believe it was like the year before. Yeah. Uh, it was right before Mexico got really crazy and yeah. they quit going on those yep. trips. So right. we went like on the last one, but we didn't know each other at all. No. And we're just like shoveling concrete. Yeah, we <laughs> on were the ground. we were working our tails off. Mission trip, more like it was real. <laughs> it, was, it was real mission trip. You yeah. know, like sometimes there's like a missioncation. Yes. Uh, yeah, You're yeah, like, hey, yeah. we're going on a mission trip no, to no, Hawaii. No. You're like, are you though? Not sure. Here. We yeah. we were doing some uh some pretty uh labor intensive stuff, but it was yeah. a great trip. Like the stories we got from that trip uh, yeah. and the people we like still. <laughs> Oh, it was so funny. It was a great trip. And it was one of those, like, we took a shower every other day in a, yeah. this, like, pull behind trailer that it was like spigot water, you know, yeah. just nothing. So, it's a real deal. Um, but it was a great trip. It was. It was, it was one of the fun ones. And that's good, where we originally met. That's been, that's like, oh, nine, I think. Yeah, it was, it was, his, his picture in my phone is actually still from, from, from that, like him that. on the bus traveling yeah. or wherever we were. Love that's that. so good. Uh, but yeah, we, we've, you know, gone way back. We've, we know you different ways, but we, uh, you know, the industries or things that we're in now that kind of brought us together in a way and our networks are just, they're intertwining. So, uh, we initially thought of you as an incredible guest to have. Um, but for the people who don't, the rare people who don't know you, right. uh, love to hear like a little intro of, you know, your family dynamic, but also like, you know, any sort of summary snapshots of, of your journey of kind of where you've been. Yeah. I know it's a, a loaded question. No, like anything cool. you want to share just to get the people to know who you are. Yeah. Gotcha. And what cool. you do. Yeah. So Miles LaRue, L-A-R-O-U-X. So I'm like born and raised. Love that. Will never leave. I'll die in Louisiana. Lord, Lord willing. And I think uh, for us, it's definitely a story of like kind of a tale of two cities. So my wife and I are both from Shreveport, Louisiana, you know, grew up there in North Louisiana. Uh, still, we still both have a three one eight area code. On, and we yes. have this like strange loyalty. Most people that are from there have that lo- yeah. like, weird loyalty. Three one great. That's exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> and so three one eight in a in a big way uh, prepared me for what was to come in Baton Rouge. Yeah. And I shared a little bit of the story of how I got planted and, and rooted in Baton Rouge. Um, but my journey in Shreveport is like the kind of the coming of age for me, if you will, uh, was one that I had very little control over. Yeah. So like grew up, my mom was a school teacher. Um, my parents split when I was three. And so most of my life is just me and the girls. So I have an older sister, younger sister, mom. Um, and for us, uh, I would say for the most part, man, we just, uh, didn't have a big dream or a big vision of life. It was just like, get up you know, make it through the day, right. get home, hope the lights are still turned on. Yeah. And, uh, and so grew up pretty poor, like yeah. not middle class, not like sugarcoating it. I mean, we were just poor, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. like we were dirt poor. Right. Um, and that's not a knock on anybody involved. It just was the reality. Yeah. And so for me, when I came to Baton Rouge for college, I, uh, I really had this opportunity to become who I wanted to be. Yeah. And part of that was just stepping into my identity as a believer. Yeah. So I had like this faith journey in, you know, in high school. Yeah. Had some really cool stuff happen along that way. Um, But when I came to college, I plugged into the BCM, uh, met an incredible group of guys. And and I was just able to uh, surround myself with some great influences that kept me from a lot of bad stuff in college. Yeah. Uh, and, And take that for whatever it is. Uh, And then you fast forward. uh, There's obviously all kind of intricacies and things we could wind in. Um, but that group of guys, uh, were super impactful for my growth, uh, and a big reason of just what led to having fun videos and building, you know, relationships through church and different stuff and conferences. And I can point all that back to just like getting plugged in into the right things. Um, just one thing that I'll share, uh, as well is like my family dynamic was always interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we could, we talked the whole podcast about yeah. like my relationship with my dad. Cause right. it's, it's just, it's su- such a fun dynamic. Uh, he's one of my best friends now. So yeah. like spoiler That's alert, awesome. That's awesome. Uh, but we didn't grow up that way. Sure. Right. So we had these, this childhood for me of just like fatherless. Right. 
you know, yeah. and, and that's a big part of my testimony as far as my faith in God is like God, the father, yeah. and mm-hmm. he knows the hairs on our head. He cares yeah. about us. Yeah. So all that to say, um, my dad and I didn't have much of a relationship till I got to college. Yeah. We had this really, really cool moment, uh, where we just were able to give each other forgiveness and Come grace on, and have some, it's you know, awesome. some cool redemption stories. Yeah. Uh, and I love that guy to death. And he lives in a small little town called Zawali. So people ask ah. me like, where's your hometown? So it's like Zawali and Shreveport and Come Baton Rouge. On. Okay, cool. I've um, never heard of Zawali. Yeah. So the famous for, tamale, uh, tamale right. festival really? every year. Come on. And we're also Choctaw Apache. So we're native okay, American. Come on. Come got like on. a card and everything. Heck yeah. Um, got a little scholarship money. Shout out nice, to the tribe. Man. You should get a tattoo. Um, yeah, I got a few. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that's a big part of my background too. It's like, man, when we go home, we go to Shreveport, we go to yeah. Zawali, or we just go to Baton Rouge. Yeah, you know? and so it's yeah. uh, it's different, unique story uh, than just like stayed in one place. Right. Um, and I guess a theme for that too is like we choose to stay in Baton Rouge. Yeah. You know, it'd be, we could could have gone back sure. to Shreveport, could go find something to do in Sabine Parish, Toledo Bend. They got great yeah. great fishing. You know, probably right, could do yeah. something there. But um, we've chosen to be in Baton Rouge, be planted here, uh, and really plugged into the community and what we, you know, what we want to, yeah, you know, see happen for a long time. Yeah, and Love just it. recently, you got some letters behind your name too. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Yeah, so work stuff, man. It's funny. I have no background in finance. It's crazy. Like I didn't study finance. It's funny. I didn't. I got a finance degree that uh, I don't use, so you yeah. can have it. Can I borrow that? Yeah, please. Yeah. So I was telling um, Brandon uh, before you got here that you used to be the plug for like fixing my iPhone. Mm-hmm. Like you were you were iPhone repair store. Oh man, let me share. So let me <laughs> share, share some of the stuff you that did story. before you got yeah, into this. Yeah, I had some crazy jobs, man. And yeah. I uh, so I worked for. Uh, this lady was incredible. Now this lady named Sally, she did fundraising. So my degree is actually in Middle Eastern politics, <laughs> international studies, Middle Eastern politics. I can read, write, and speak like conversational Arabic. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So a whole new alphabet. Sure. Use that like once every trip when the Uber driver <laughs> yeah. is yeah. like, yeah. I can tell Just he's from there. Right. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I love it. Uh, but aside from that, I thought I was going to go into like international politics. Sure. I thought I was going to go move overseas, go work at state department yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, and part of my internship in Israel was centered around that. Yeah. And so got to taste and see the international community, but there was something that I was always longing to like get back home. Yeah. And that's why I said, you know, spelled out my last name is yeah. like, man, there's something about me that yep. just belongs in Louisiana. Yep. Right. And so, uh, again, for me, I got back to Baton Rouge. I was like, all right, what am I going to do? Had a cool internship with this lady. It was really a job. She paid me hourly, but this lady, Sally, who did fundraising for mostly Louisiana political candidates. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of people that, you know, I mean, I got to be in some crazy rooms that 22 year old guy didn't right. belong in. Right. Um, and then I actually got fired from that job. It's the only job I've ever been fired from. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll share this story real quick. There was a, it was like the duck dynasty guys, Come on. um, speaker of the house at the time. And then a uh, majority whip. So you if you just go figure out the timeline, you know <laughs> yeah, who those sure. people were. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, just a fly on the wall at this like wine, nice, nice wine dinner yeah. at, uh, Galatoire's in New Orleans. And I tweeted something, and this is where like social media, I've learned uh, so many times from my mistakes, but social media will get you in trouble. I tweeted something like, uh, you know, love so-and-so, he's a champion for blah, 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 loves Louisiana, and he never goes cheap on the wine. That's what I said, verbatim. <laughs> so dumb. Never goes cheap on the <laughs> wine. I like it, but I yeah, mean, yeah. I get it in, the, in that realm, you know. So the next day, she's like, hey, can we meet for coffee? I'm like, sure. She's like, hey, it's like you or me. And it's going to be, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> so, so, so like I lost my $10 an hour job Come on. doing that, but it Shout was so Sally. fun. And, and Sally, she was incredible, but that's yeah. the only job I've ever been fired from. But I did learn a lot in that moment oh, of yeah. just, uh, one, I learned a ton about, well, a ton about politics, sure. right? So like the, we were the fundraising behind it, yeah. which is like everything. Yeah, it's yeah. Huge. So I learned a ton around that, um, but also just learned a lot about social media yeah. and the good and the bad of it. Yeah. Um, were you bummed to that or were you kind of oh, like, I was, I no, no, no. I was like heartbroken. Dude. Yeah. Cause I've never been like. You know, yeah. I mean, Young take gun. it for what it is. Like, I've got a couple of jobs. Sure. I've never been fired. Like, this is yeah, like, it's a big deal. It was heartbreaking. You know, you think your world is over. And those connections yeah. and those people that you were in and those rooms. Yeah. To lose right. that. And, and it was awesome. a lot of fun. Yeah. It was yeah. A, like a ton of fun. A really cool job. Yeah. And so, uh, so that being said, I uh, also at the time was working for a buddy uh, selling shoes. Yeah. So sneaker politics, I'm big into shoes. Okay. Shout out to sneaker politics, Fletch, the whole crew. Yeah. Uh, but the owner, Derek Curry, is a mentor of mine. Like, look up to him. He's built yeah. an incredible business. Uh, and he just gave me a shot to just work part time and learn about the shoe business. That's cool. Which yeah. was really fun. Uh, 
parlay that into just part time and part time. Like, what am I going to do with my life? Yeah. Right. And I had an opportunity to open up a location for a guy out of Shreveport, but down here in Baton Rouge, fixing phones. Yeah. So that was my identity for several years mm-hmm. of just like, oh, Miles is the phone guy. Yeah, that was yeah. a while. He'll fix phones. We did custom stuff. Yeah. Uh, one of the coolest things we did was the the phone that Odell picked up the call and got drafted from, yeah. we had customized That's and like cool. the giants uh, tweeted it out and yeah. all this stuff. So, yeah. uh, so it was a cool season of life. And in that I actually, you know, leverage relationships, yeah. leverage connections to, to grow the business. Right. So all the NFL guys, I mean, I got cease and desist from, uh, from like compliance at LSU, uh-huh. you know, cause this was before NIL existed, yeah, yeah. but it was like, Hey, come get your phone fixed. And I might not charge you if you <laughs> right. throw it on the gram, you know, <laughs> right, so, right. uh, you know, <laughs> Not to get anybody in trouble. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. no names. We didn't win much that during that that, that time, anyways. <laughs> you know, we were happy, not chasing that. We were happy right for now. like eight wins. Yeah, uh, yeah. But but in that season of life too, man, it was just like uh, growing a business, running it. Uh, and here's another crazy just story that happened. I was at the beach on vacation, and uh, we had like a part time guy that was running the store that day, and he sends me a picture, and it's an eviction notice. Uh. And part of my story is I've seen these before. Yeah. Like that ain't, that ain't the first time I've seen these. Right. Uh, and it says the name, the business, you know, all that said, man, that's, that's crazy. So I call the owner You know, I had been doing everything from a day to day running the business, but I'm just making deposits at the bank. I'm not paying bills. I'm not paying rent. So what ended up happening, we were like several months behind Mm -hmm. on commercial rent. Y'all know that's not cheap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and he ended up, you know, unfortunately had all kind of just life stuff happen yeah. to this guy. And and so for me, I just was at the beach hanging out and another just moment of not having a job. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, what am I going to do? I'm 25 at the time. Yeah. So it wasn't the end of the world. Sure. I'm not married, no kids. Like, yeah. Sometimes still, it still hits pretty hard at that age though. You're like, yeah. Oh, you know, for you sure. You're getting it figured out. And all of a sudden, yeah. Like we're about you. to open a second location. Yeah. We yeah. had like a purchase agreement on, an, on another site and everything in Baton Rouge. And so we're growing, yeah. making money, doing great yeah. things. Um, so I thought, man, I'm gonna be the phone guy for whatever, however yeah. long. And so uh, obviously that rug kind of got pulled out from under me. Uh, but a total guy thing of like, directed me to where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. So in that season I had been to, uh, been going to church and met some guys and had lunch with a guy named Gavin. Yeah. And was like, Hey man, I'm trying to figure out what, I'm, what to do with my life. He's like, well, this is what I do. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. Maybe you could be, uh, maybe it could be a fit. Mm-hmm. He said, man, you're not going to make any money. It's going to be straight commission. Uh, at this time, he was just his own advisor, sure. his business partner. So Highland Wealth, as it exists in the story I'll tell, didn't exist yet. Yeah. It was just uh, each of these siloed advisors. So he's right. like, you can come be an advisor down the hall. Right. Like, I'm not paying you. So he didn't hire me. Yeah. He said, come try this out. I'm like, well, you know, I got a car note yeah. and some rent. And, some and that's, money. that's you know, that's really it. Like, I could probably probably make a couple grand a month. Yeah. You know? And so in that, uh, dove headfirst into that career. Uh, as an advisor, started getting licenses and that yeah. sort of thing. And really that journey was the catalyst to where I'm at today as yeah. a, you know, as an advisor with the CFP, you mentioned yeah. certified financial planner. So yeah. a really cool designation really in our cool. industry yeah. uh, that took me a long time to get. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's like, well shout deserved. out, shout out to my wife for just being awesome. I, yeah. I, I mean, I took that test this uh, in July and like early July and we had a new, we had a newborn, uh, little son yeah. in, at the end of May. Yeah. And so my wife was just like the best ever. That's cool. Um, can't, can't hype her y'all up went, enough. Did y'all go to high school together? So this is funny. Um, I was a senior when she was in eighth grade. Gotcha. Okay. So like I knew kind of knew of her older brother who sure. was a couple years ahead of us. Yeah. We played baseball together, whatever. That sounds like such um, a big difference in high school. Oh, it was because, well, <laughs> yeah, here's, well, the, no, no, well, no, here's, what, here's what's hilarious is like for, to be honest, uh, she, so young life is really big in Shreveport. It's mm-hmm. ministry, yeah. you know, kind of mentoring and stuff. Sure. So, uh, we all did young life in high school. Well, right. there's a, it's called wildlife for middle schoolers. Gotcha. So the girl I was dating at the time was also a senior. She was a leader for the wildlife. Yeah. So literally this would be the equivalent of youth group was yeah. like, Lexi, my wife now, was one of the kids that was mentored by my <laughs> then girlfriend. Hilarious. And what's funny is I was like the cool dude dating yeah, dating the prom queen. Sure. But I was in the band, you know, like yeah, I wasn't yeah. like you know what cool. I'm saying? Yeah. Like it wasn't that. Yeah. But to them, we so we do have a picture uh from back in the day where she has like her crossbody strap purse. Yes. And uh and I'm I don't even know, wearing something lame probably. Yeah. yeah. And uh we have a picture of us together, not even remotely dating. Right. Um right. and so it's funny. So we knew each other back then. Um 
but really didn't didn't connect and, yeah. and get to know one another till after a lot of that right. that I just explained happened. Right. So she was a junior at LSU, and I had been a couple of years removed from LSU when yeah. we started dating. That's cool, man. So, I joke with my wife too. I tell everybody that she knew me, right? <laughs> but I didn't know her. But you know, it was just just high school days. Oh yeah. Right? No. So you know, when they're younger. But, that's so good. But man, that's great. Um, and and I think like I'd mentioned before that almost everybody I meet one or two degrees of separation, they know miles. Yeah. And one of the things I was telling you before, I think what I appreciate the most though, is that it's authentic, man. You are who you are, even on social media, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and so people can get these perceptions and ideas of folks, but one thing that you are it is involved in the community, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people know you just from a degree of separation, people know you in Baton Rouge. I guess what I wanted to ask you, you know, after telling your story and how you came to be doing what you're doing today, how much do you think like that involvement in the community impacts like your personal life and then also your business too? So I think it, it definitely impacts it drastically. Yeah. Like in a major way. Uh, so for me, just community in general, like I'm, I'm just wired to be around people. Right. Like my default is I got to be around some people. Yeah. Like I, I'm at my worst self probably like when I'm alone, yeah. left to my own thoughts, unless it's like very intentional time where I'm yeah. you know, working on myself, right. faith, that sort of thing. Right. And so a uh, cool part of our job is that we, we say like our job is just to see people and fight to see people. Yeah. So like, where do you go do that? Like where are people? Well, they're out there in yep. the community doing different things. Right. And so a pretty obvious marriage of, 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 you know, work and play for me is like, I really enjoy being involved in things. Yeah. Um, and the pendulum has swung, you know, several different ways for that, to be honest, where, uh, early on when you're young, not married, no kids, it's easy. Like you just say yes to everything. Yeah. Right? You just get involved right. in all the stuff. Right. Um, but for me, I've had to, you know, be more strategic and learn how to say no. That's yeah. Um, huge. and some, in and what I'm involved in. Yeah. Uh, and we've learned, I think as a firm that, let's be really great and involved in a couple things yeah. instead of like halfway involved in right. 10 All or 15 different things. Exactly. And yeah. so, uh, building so, deep and not wide. That's exactly right. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So just pouring into a few organizations really, really well. Um, for us, I think we, it's funny. We noticed this early on from a marketing standpoint too, of like our business is managing money, you know, doing planning. We work with mostly retirees and business owners. Right. So I'm generally talk to people a lot older than me sure. most of the time. Yeah. Uh, what we found is people are less concerned with rates of return and are we in a recession and what's the Fed going to do? And all that's important. Yeah. But more often than not, people want to know that we're real people. Yeah. Yeah. And so sure. we found like we added a community tab on our website a few years ago. Yeah. And all it is, is just, a uh, like a monthly post or every other month update yeah. of what our team is doing in the community. And we've looked back over several years of data and that every, every single month, every single year is the most viewed tab in our, That's in our cool. website. Yeah. So for us, and I have like this marketing bug in me. Yeah. Right. Right. And so for me, it's like, what do people actually care about? Well, they want to know what we care about. Yes. So people care Huge. about what you care about uh, for, and then again, as a firm, the cool part is we've gotten to dictate and build that culture in such right, a way right. that our whole team every quarter takes time out of the business. We yeah. just shut it down and we go serve. Yeah. It's huge. And so, uh, yeah. so in that man, I, I get so much fulfillment. Y'all know, like it's like the mission trip stuff we talked about when you go serve, when you serve somebody, you always end up better. Yeah. yeah. Like you get more out of it than yeah. they do. Yeah. Um, and that's not why you do it, but no. it's just, uh, for me, a calling to just, to just be in, be for the people, yeah. like be with people and be for them. Yeah. And I think it goes to show like the reason that I almost struggle to say successful because it's, it almost seems inauthentic, but the reason that you have such deep roots in this community that you're not even originally from is because you love it That's and right. is because you're passionate about it. And yeah. it kind of just comes out in everything that you're doing. It's not fake. It's real. It's just, no. yeah, man. So I, I think that's a big testament to why you've made an impact in the community is because you yeah. love it. Well, I appreciate it. I'll share this story. Uh, so uh, some, of my, some of you may have seen, or maybe you didn't, but uh, a couple months ago, there was a there was a spread for 225, 225 Magazine, and it was mm -hmm. all these just yes. different like young professionals, yeah. Yeah. like why people choose to be and stay in Baton Rouge. Right. And when I got the call to be on this cover, I was like, oh man, like this, like I was it's big like, time. super it's excited. Super cool. yeah. But people don't, like people just to your point of like, oh, the success and like, yeah. 
people don't people see the cover they don't know they don't see the story of how we uh, got there yeah. so i wanted to like let me take can i tell yeah, you how please. we got there yeah so uh gavin who i mentioned is a mentor of mine uh like love that guy to death yeah. would just run through a wall for him um he has helped build and has laid the foundation for our firm where we are today and so I get to walk in his footsteps in a lot of ways and and participate in that. And so uh, he had uh, joined and applied to, to go through the business reports leadership Academy. Right. And so he went through that and then it's at the end of it, it's like, Hey, nominate somebody you want to to go. So he nominated me. He's like, miles cares about leadership and wants to grow, whatever. So, uh, so I get an email, Hey, apply. So I apply and I get the email back and I actually sent it to my buddy uh, who's the CEO of a law firm. And I sent it to him. I was like, dude, we should do this together. It'd be a lot of fun. And then like the same day he texts me, he's like, Hey, I just got the, the notification. We got accepted. And I said, man, my hadn't come through yet. So I'm just oh, refreshing. Man. Yeah. We'll come to find out. I didn't get accepted. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, man, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. But if you know me and this is something I'll talk about if we have time, yeah. it's like, I'm, I've rarely take no for yeah, an answer. Yeah, you're not going to take that. Like, I'm, right. so right. I just send the email, and it's a little coy, and sure. a little catty for sure, Yeah. but I send the email to uh, whatever the email address was, and I said, hey, I saw I wasn't selected in this group. I uh, just want to know what is lacking in my resume or what, what are some areas I can Love improve it. on to maybe be uh, considered the next round. And I get an email like right back, like 30 minutes back, and it wasn't who I emailed. It was like her Somebody boss. Oh, nice. And he said, man, I love – that you asked this question. Um, we're having, we've had some people that are, that committed that had to move around. Uh, once you know, we would love to have you this, yeah. this go around. <laughs> so the guy that sent that email that. was Julio Malera, another guy that I think is just a huge staple, just a, a Titan in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Uh, and he sent that email, not knowing anything about me, yeah. right. uh, but just knew that I was just going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Ask. Do it. And then you fast forward, I did go through the uh, training and we built a good, cool relationship. He got to know more of my story. I got yeah. to know more of his. Yeah. And then you wind up on the cover of a magazine. There and you so, go. It's so, huge so it's funny how, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it wasn't like we just had all these wins stacked yeah. up and then you we're didn't on get the, the cover. First, yes. Like it was actually a no to yeah. start. It's yeah. rare people see the, the the iceberg is like the metaphor. That's right. Yes. See. You know what you see and what you don't see? That's yeah. right. Uh, and you've kind of right. touched on it, but like, I mean, obviously you're very involved in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and just friendships, relationships, and uh, and family, obviously. You just had, like you mentioned, you just had a baby. Yeah. And I'm not putting you on the spot saying you have it all together with balance, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, I mean, are there things you do to uh, attempt? So we call, like, we've done an episode of, like, work-life balance, right? Yeah. We kind of settled on harmony. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, for you, how does that look like as far as being, uh, obviously, it's evident you love your wife, you love your kids, so but you also love your work. So what's, what's balance kind of look like for you? Yeah. So it is difficult, man. Right. And it's so funny. Uh, I shared this, uh, you know, kind of the outline that y'all, we talked through like, Hey, me, we might be talking about this with my wife. And she is like, Hey, what do you think about this question? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like give me That's some, the perfect give me some ask. perspective. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she's like, you should tell this story. And so, uh, I think on the outset it's difficult, uh, to quote unquote balance work and home. Uh, especially if you're in an industry like ours yeah. where we're service based yeah. and people have our cell phone number. Yep. Yes. Um, and so my point is uh, I actually don't believe in like a work life and a home life, mm. at least for me. Yeah. I, I don't, I haven't been able to see uh, like the line of demarcation. Right. Like I, I don't know where that exists yep. and I don't, it, and I don't think it's because I haven't drawn it. Yeah. It's, I think it's because there's so much intertwine and yes. overlap yes. that, uh, for it to function properly and do what I actually want to have happen, like yeah. make, make it all happen. Yeah. Uh, can't turn it off. And so the truth is, and y'all know this, y'all know the deal. Like if a client calls me that has $5 million account with us, right. After I've clocked out or driven home, right. Well, I'm still got to pick up the phone. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, but I choose to pick up the phone. Right. So I don't want to, you know, make light of that. Like no. nobody's telling me I got to make that call, but I know it's in both of our best interests. That's if right. I pick that phone up. That's yeah. right. Now the cool part is I have an awesome wife that also knows how we get paid Yes. and understands yeah. that as we grow the firm and we continue to grow our income and right. all the things we want to have happen. Right. Some of that has to exist. Yeah. Right. Um, but so some I'm working on for sure, not perfect on it. No. Uh, what I th- think that has been helpful is just like this idea of the good old days yeah, and like honoring that. Yeah, I like that. I think we are all in them right now, right now. Like yep. we're in the good old days today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, getting to get off a plane last night, my daughter's already asleep, yeah. but I told my wife, Hey, I'm waking her up yeah. and to walk in there and her just light up. Cause she hadn't yeah. seen me wake her up in a couple of days yes. like yeah. that, <laughs> you know, so 
if somebody called in that moment, I don't care no. how much money you got with That's me, right. I'm not picking that call up. That's right. Right. That's right. And so being able to discern those moments. Um, but I'll share this, like for, you know, for us, uh, we've been very clear on like expectations of who does what in the household. Yeah. Like there's like, I, I heard it said like the best way to starve a dog is to assign three people to feed it. It's good. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if same yeah. thing with kid, like if, uh, yes. if we we're like, Hey, are you taking care of lunch? Are you taking care of lunch? Right. Like who's doing the snack? Like if uh, we weren't clear on some of those things, yep. you know? And so drop off in the morning is my job. Yeah. And I take pride in drop off. Yeah. Uh, for us, you know, my daughter, she goes to uh, this lady, uh, Zsa, Zsa who is just incredible. She's been keeping kids in her house for like yeah. 30 years. Colombian lady who's just like a firecracker. That's cool. And, um, and I take Landry every morning to, to Jaja's and uh, we just have this routine. One is that we're listening to Moana for the most part. <laughs> yes. On soundtrack. Right. Uh, and a sidebar. You always thought like when you, it'd probably be a funny TikTok of like, we listen to Moana. The expectation is like you get the kid gets, the car, gets out of the car and you're like, listen to whatever else you want to. Right. Like gangster rap. You just keep listening to Moana. Yes. You know it's what I mean? Soundtrack. Soundtrack. Oh, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. And so, uh, so, but that being said, we get out the car. We, there's a black cat. That's the neighbor's cat. That's always roaming around. We look at that. We knock on the door. Yeah. And at some point there was something, I guess like a dish or some kind of food got stuck on the door. Yeah. And it's still, it's like not there, but there's still remnants. Sure. So we say yucky. We point at that and it's yucky. <laughs> yeah. And that's our routine, routine every yeah. single morning. Yeah. And we go in and, uh, and man, that time is so sacred to me. Yeah. Um, and I get calls during that time. Sure. Don't, I don't pick up. No. Um, you know, there are mornings where I got an early meeting and I got to move some stuff around where yeah. I don't get to do drop off. I mean, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go do pickup. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, so it's those moments I think that yeah. allow me to still be present yeah. and create some sort of guardrails. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, the truth is, uh, the life we get to live is a byproduct of the work I got to exactly. do. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. I understand that, um, I can't afford to pay the nanny yes. if I ain't getting after what it doing? Monday yeah. to Friday yeah. and sometimes Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, exactly. And so I think keeping that perspective that, uh, you know, all this is, is intertwined. Yes. Yeah. That's, um, that's what I'm hearing from you is that it's not an either or it's not like I'm right. going to choose work and, or I'm going to choose family. It's a yes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to yeah. do both. And that's you're right. going to make sure that it's a priority to do. Both. Yeah. And on the home life, man, I will say like, there's a story I, I recall, uh, being just in it, solving a problem, yeah. kind of putting out a fire. Yeah. And what ended up happening was my wife, we're in the living room and I'm on my phone, just going to town, got the yeah. iPad out, like yeah. just trying to solve something. Right. I don't remember what it was, but right. it was a big deal at the time, right? It always is. Mm -hmm. And so trying to solve that issue and she's talking to me, telling me something. I'd asked her about her day or I'd asked her something specific and she's told me this whole story and I look up and she's just staring at me. <laughs> That's the worst. And she says, she said, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, <laughs> Dude, right? Yeah, she says, look. you didn't hear a word I said, did you? Yeah. I said, no, yeah. I didn't. Um, and that was a, that was a fun night. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but so the point of that is like, I'm not perfect at it. Yeah. And there's definitely opportunities to grow. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to be like some of the boundaries I'm trying to set or guardrails is just yeah. like when I'm in it, yeah. like be home. Right. Yeah. Uh, but again, knowing that the emergencies come up, services, yep. stuff happen. Mm -hmm. And then we got to also set clear expectations yep. for clients of like, Hey, here's the rules of engagement. Yeah. Right, like right. if I let a client call me at 9 PM every week, well, right. they're just going to keep calling me yeah, at 9 PM. Expected. So that's, that's a part of it. But yeah. again, incredible wife. Yes. She, uh, she's, she's better than, you know, we, Shout we out. feel like we need those jabs. We don't need, we, yeah, yeah, we yeah. shouldn't have to have those jabs, right. but sometimes yeah. we get them. We're like, all right, things are into perspective now. I've just yeah. been like <laughs> reset. Yes. Right. Mindset yes. wise. Yeah. And then, and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Well, it's a good, it, it's something I, I wanted to mention is like, it's a good, uh, thing to know the answer to this question. So, uh, y'all, have y'all heard of Ryan Leak? Ever met that guy? Uh, seen that yeah. guy or heard of him? So you sent some podcasts of his? Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's awesome. He, uh, guy is a motivational speaker, uh, great author, uh, but and coaches a lot of professional athletes right. and stuff. So he wrote a book called leveling up and it's just 12 questions that you should ask yourself if I you like want to live. It. It's a really yeah. incredible book. Um, go check it out. But in the book, one of the questions he asks says we should be asking ourselves is what's it like to be on the other side of me? It's mm. good. Yeah. And so in those moments where you're yeah. at home and you're kind of working and you're kind of playing, like what's it like to be on the side of me? Well, when I'm putting out a fire, yeah. like what's it like to be on the other side of miles? It's probably, you probably feel forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, you right. probably feel like I don't care about you. Right. 
you probably feel like you're not a priority. Right. And so I've had to learn you know, the hard way sometimes yeah. that, uh, that that can be the perception. Yeah. Well, we've kind of skirted around this and I think you, I could answer it for you, but I want you to answer. Yeah. We, we talk about a lot how we're in crowded fields. Like oh, yeah. everybody knows a realtor. Mm-hmm. And in mm-hmm. a lot of cases, everybody knows a financial planner, somebody sure. that can handle their finances. Yeah. And so I feel like I know what, I, there's a lot of things that I see that's unique about you, but what do you feel like in your branding and just how you present yourself and who you are, what separates you or, and, and how do you communicate that to other people or show it to other people? Yeah. I think authenticity is one, just yeah. like, we're, I'm not the stock picker, right? Like I'm not going to sure. find the best stock to just put your money in over sure. the next five years. Like that's, we're not, our team is not, we're not those guys. Yeah. Um, we're also not the team that is going to, uh, you know, downplay or, uh, you know, speak poorly on another advisor. Right. Like we're not even, we're not in the business of just replacing relationships. Right. Uh, but the truth is more often than not, when we come across somebody that's a candidate for what we do, they're lacking in some area of planning. Right. And we approach our go to market strategy a little different than mm-hmm. just, hey, let's invest some money or let's place some risk product that you might need. And it's much more comprehensive and personal uh, to your specific situation. Right. So for me and in business, working with retirees, uh, like it doesn't make sense that we work in that space because we're so young. Yeah. And in that, I've, I've found it kind of goes like what that question of what's it like to be on the other side of me. Like if you're 60 years old, you're twice my age. What's it like to be on the other side of me? You're probably thinking this dude, like, how's he going to help me? Yeah, exactly. Um, But that objection, you know, in sales, we call that objection, that objection that they've created in their head of that guy's too young or too inexperienced or whatever. Right. um, That's just something that we got to overcome. Yeah. Right. And something that has been a great tool or good, good use of that is you've just been uh, the reality of most people that are 55, 60, nearing retirement are, are ideal, you know, prospects. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, if they have a relationship, they're like, they're working with somebody who's probably close to their same, similar age. Right. And so for us, a way to stand out is we don't use our age as a crutch. We use our, our age and we got, you know, sure. A guy on the team, he refers to himself as the gray haired fellow. So, <laughs> uh, and he's the oldest on the team, one of the right. partners. And, and, and he, uh, you know, he speaks to this, even as he's talking to clients is like, we've thought through succession planning. So if your advisor is 55, 60, and you're 55, 60, how much longer do you think he's going to be working with you? Right. Yeah, and yeah. so at, at age 75, do you want to have to go find a new advisor then? Right. Or at age 80, whenever one of your the, one of the spouses die and you got yeah. a life event, then yeah. you got to go find a new. And so for us, as a young firm, sure. we get to commit to work with people for a long runway. Right. And so I tell people, I'm probably going to go to your funeral. Yeah. And I'm going to still be working whenever yeah. I, that happens. Yeah. And that's so that's a competitive advantage for us sure. in you're the marketplace. Turning in, you're turning what could be a negative into this is actually a positive. That's this right. is what makes sure. us different. That's right. Yeah. And then like from a branding standpoint, um, I just so I sit in the mar- head of marketing seat. So I'm accountable yeah. for the firm's marketing. Right. Uh, and it's a lot of fun yeah. to do. Uh, and we have an inc- incredible team that executes. So right. I can't take any credit sure. for like any po any like yeah. I just <laughs> not graphic of, designing and things not like that. doing that yeah. not yeah. my strong suit um but one thing that I'd get to do is cast strategic vision yeah and we realized a long time ago that we're not going to have you're not going to see a commercial for Highland Wealth you're yeah. not going to see billboards um some of that helps from a branding standpoint but what's the first thing you do when you hear of somebody that you don't know you look them up yeah and so I think that points to that story of the community tab yeah. of yeah. like people go and see like, what are these people really about? Yeah, for sure. Cause you can go, I mean, real estate, financial advising, it's, it's all become commoditized in yeah. a way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, who do you want to talk to when your money's down 20% That's yeah. right. or your house hadn't sold in three months? Yeah. Like who do you trust to have those tough conversations with you, hold you accountable to the things that you yeah. said are important. And so that's a, that's a big part of our, yeah. you know, competitive advantage I yeah, would say it's a great answer and as a testimony uh, I'm a quote if you're looking on YouTube quote client of miles yes. and I'm a type of person that like I, I trust someone to do their job like, I don't try to get in their job and yeah. do it for them I'm right. like I give miles the money to be honest I have no idea where it's going <laughs> what, what he's, he's doing, doing with it, with it. Yeah. I, he has told me right. it has gone it's, over it's my still head. there I promise it's yeah. still there hopefully <laughs> but I, I trust him and it's not just a pity like hey he's a friend let me just help him out it's like I genuinely trust him yeah. because of the authenticity he talked about yeah. and um, you know I feel like that it, it, he wants to see me win I want to see him win yeah. it's a mutual mm-hmm. 
you know, relationship there. So yeah. as a, as a plug and a personal testimony there. Awesome. Um, I appreciate that. But yeah, so I, I messed with you during the notes here and told you to give 17 tips here, but no, <laughs> Just any sort of like, you know, someone who may be in that early stage mm-hmm. of like questioning, maybe they just got laid off. Maybe their their plans have just totally been 180'd. Yeah. They're in a little bit of a frustrating mode or just someone who's, you know, maybe on the cusp of hitting something great. Yeah. Any sort of like words of wisdom that you could offer them? I know you kind of gave yours, but like, you know. Yeah. And I, I definitely have a few and I mentioned mentioned some because I've had man, I've been fired yeah you know right. you can call it laid off like most people that get laid off yeah. got fired yeah right yeah. <laughs> so it's like dude so you got fired it. It budget yeah, cuts. you got yeah. fired okay. like, like the finance you're like man we're the economy's booming <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. this company's stock's going up uh-huh. they're not they're not laying people up but some right. obviously a lot of companies are not making light of that people get laid off it's a real mm. thing yeah um and it's a tough situation to be in yeah. i think any any transitory like season of life can be tough. Like we're designed to resist change, mm-hmm. yeah. And so a new job means change and all that. Um, so there's definitely some some encouraging words that I that I thought through. One is just that uh, it's a Nick Saban quote. Actually, he says it takes what it takes. And so yeah. for our industry, for y'all's industry, like there's no tricks to it. Yeah, it shortcut. just takes what it takes. Mm-hmm. Like you could pay for a bunch of leads, or yeah. you can go do this and do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, some stuff works and some stuff doesn't, but it just takes what it takes. Yeah. And more often than not, it takes a lot of work, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of sure. hard work and activity. Yeah. And so uh, it's not, you know, what you're capable of doing, but what you're actually willing to do. Well, let me interject there because I think one of the questions and I'm putting you on the spot here, but just hearing about how you grew up yeah, and that shift in your mindset, because it would have been easy for you to say, well, I wasn't dealt the same hand as everybody else. Sure. Or, you know, I grew up where I was just poor. Right. And so what shifted and you talked about your identity and oh, yeah. finding that in your relationship with the Lord. But what shifted from you saying, because it is that approach that Nick Saban says, there is no shortcut. It just takes what it takes. Yeah. Because you could have easily given into, oh, well, this is the hand that I've been dealt. What right. transitioned for you to go from that? Oh, well, no, it's I can still do this even with how I was raised or that kind of. Thing. Yeah, I think p- part of it is trial by fire. Yeah. You know, like when you don't have a safety net. Yeah. Then, you know, you just got to do it. Yeah. Like there's no, I couldn't move back home because, you know, what family, there was nothing, there was no home to move back to. Wow. Right. Yeah. Like that's the reality. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so for me, it was like, I burned the boats a long time ago that's good. and yeah. we actually never even had boats. Right. Like it was like a raft. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and I'm, what's cool. And I hope you, what people hear in this is like, I'm so grateful that I grew up in a 16 by 80 trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm so grateful that I was on reduced lunch. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm so grateful that I had a mom who taught school Mm. and they don't pay teachers anywhere near enough money. Yep. But at least she knew that, Hey, the way out of this thing is education. That's right. And she said, you should go down to LSU. That's right. We never, you never been to Baton Rouge, go visit. Yep. You're going to move. The second time you come to Baton Rouge is going to be the day you move into your dorm and audition for a spot on the drum line. It's awesome. And, uh, and I would just say, you know, I'm not, it's funny. Like I'm not great at many things. Like I was an average baseball player growing right. up. I quit that eventually because the guy wanted me to play fall ball. And right. I'm like, I'm trying to I'm be out. in the marching band. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I'm an okay drummer. Like I was never great. Like I, I tell people I barely made the drum line at LSU. Like right. I, there were guys way better than me at drumming. Um, and so I'm not, I've been good at, at several things. Yeah. I'm great at people. And so I figured what can I do? What industry, like where can I go that, my people skills can just take me as far as I can go. Yeah. And then I found an industry that has a pretty high ceiling Yeah, and I get paid to just talk to people, yeah. Yeah. behavioral counselor, manage emotions yeah. and build relationships. Yeah. And so, um, hopefully that answers the question of like a trial by fair trial by fire, but ultimately, uh, finding a lane where I can like run in and succeed. use what you're good at for sure. Yeah. And not quit. That's right. That's the biggest deal. Oh yeah. So yeah. I think it's like, Seven, seven to nine percent, depending on the stat you look at, uh, percent of financial advisors make it past the second year. Yeah, and so, and a lot of that's because it's all commission based. Yeah, it's probably similar with realtors. Yes. you know, and so, yeah. um, it's a testament to you guys. Like y'all have built great businesses, you have built great teams, and yeah. you ultimately you've built trust with people right. that they, you know, they call you whenever you know that yeah. season of life. That's right, for sure. That's um, incredible, man. So that's yeah. one. I think Love it takes it. what it takes. Uh, another is that if you want to grow in influence, so this might be not for somebody that's laid off, but maybe somebody that's at a job that's like unhappy with their job or like, man, I'm trying to grow or get the promotion or climb the ladder. Um, If the easiest way to grow in influence in a company 
is to find out the leader's mission yeah. and just adopt that for a season. That's good. So like make that your mission. Like if you get caught, I told an intern this, he was kind of, he was on the, he was like in this fork in the road uh, as an intern that I, you know, interviewed and we were able to hire him and he did great work, but he's also just an, he's an intern, yeah. a college student at LSU sure. on his phone a ton. Yeah. Shout out to Parker. I'll call you out. <laughs> and so, uh, but I told him this, I said, man, like, and it was nearing the time where he was either going to get an offer yeah, and that's our path. Like we love hiring interns yeah. and growing them in our culture. They go full time and we've got three guys that are on the team that are just crushing all of right. them that are, that yeah. were started as interns. Right. My point is we had a conversation. It was this fork in the road of like, you either going to work here or you're not. Yeah. And it's not going to be up to because of me. Yeah. Like, cause I didn't have the conversation. It's going to be up to you. Right. And I said, you got to get caught doing the right things. That's good. And like, start going to other team yep. members say, Hey man, I got nothing to do today. What can I help you with? Yep. Yeah. Like how good does that feel when your yeah. intern says, Hey, I, yeah. I got some free time. What can team I do? Player. And so, um, yeah, the cool part is that guy's a, a important piece of the pie, Freshman. you know, on the yeah. on the team now. So, good. Good. Um, growing an influence. Uh, this one is huge for me. Uh, give more than you think you should. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, people people that know me well know my like love language is like gifts and yeah. words of affirmation. Right. Like if you give me a gift card and tell me I look great today, like yeah. I'm your best friend. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. because I receive gifts really well, I give gift. I love gift giving. Yeah. Um, so how are we doing on time? I got to tell good. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Yeah. So I'll share this story with you because this is recent and really cool. Um, we hosted a client event, very specific niche for like a plant workers, So industry workers, yeah. right, guys retiring from chemical plants. Right. And we also had service companies that sell to those guys. Um, a client was coming. I invite, I asked him to invite his wife and kids. Like it's a family event. Yeah. So he brings his wife. I meet her for the first time. And I have like a dot card. Y'all familiar yeah, with those? Yeah, a yeah. digital card? A business yeah. card. So I have the dot card and I just, you know, she's like, oh, I've heard great things about you. She'd never been involved in any meetings. Yeah. It's actually pretty common. We try to get the spouse involved. Both. Sometimes right. it doesn't happen. Sure. Sometimes it does. Right. But um, in that first time I met her, you know, just dot card, gave yeah. her my contact request. She was like so impressed by the dot yeah, card. Right. It's like this thing costs $3. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but she loved it. And she's like, hey, you know, in my industry, we don't have, we don't have business cards. Sure. Like that's really cool. So me being me who I am. And I, this is something that I've, I've built the muscle of. I didn't just start doing That's this, right. but like I love writing handwritten notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I make it a point to write at least yeah. one a week. Right. And in that I had an extra dot card on my desk. So I wrote her a note. Hey, it's so great to meet you. Here's your new business card. Enjoy. There you that go. was the end of it. Yeah. That was the end of it. like yeah. that. And that was the cool thing about God is like, he goes before you and he goes after you. That's yeah. good. And so yeah. he, sure does. he was working all kinds of stuff and I didn't even know, and I didn't do it for what, the, what I'm about to yeah. tell you, you just do it because yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You just give more than you think you should. Right. Yeah. And so I gave, uh, and fast forward a couple months later, I get an email and it looked like it was like one of those phishing emails, yeah. which our compliance tries to pop us all the time uh -huh. with these emails. And so I was like, Oh, I'm getting fished. <laughs> and it, it was like funds to invest was like the title. Uh, yeah. I'm like, this, that sounds no. spammy. For oh, it's sure. definitely, Dear it's sir. definitely yeah. a, it's a Nigerian print somewhere. Yes. You know? yes, <laughs> so it does. It says funds to invest. And, but I get to read the body of the email before I click any links, you know? Uh, yeah. And, uh, and it was legit. Yeah. I said, hey, I'm a friend of so-and-so. I actually go to church with this lady, the lady who I gave the dot card to. Right. She said, I work with this family, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, fast forward, we meet with the lady. You know, We had to do the work. So yeah, we do for good sure. planning. Yeah. Yeah. We win the, win, the, win the business. And that's now the you know, second biggest client I have. It's huge, man. And that was like from a dot card. Yep. But if I don't give, this, yep. is, what, this is what I love. Yep. It's because if I don't send the letter and, and send the card, do I get that account? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Right. And it's not about the account. Right. It's about being a good steward. Um, this is something I definitely wanted to make sure I say. Like, we're not going to be remembered by the rate of return we get for clients. Sure. The how much we sell their house more for than it was listed, or you know the competitive offer we get, uh, you know, or the legacy we help people li leave. Like, we're not going to be remembered for any of that. I yeah. think we get to heaven one day. And guys, like, how did you steward the relationships that I put on your path? That's exactly it. Like, how did you man. take care of Brandon? How did you take yep. care of Rhett? And, and so when we do that, yep. and when I have that perspective, and it's, I don't always have the perspective. Sure. Yeah. Like, we're not, sure. you know, we're working on this thing. We lost, yeah. And so, uh, but when I have that perspective, like, that's when I'm at my best. And I'm able to walk in those good, iterations man. and those instances of just just doing what I think I'm supposed to do. That's right. Um, so really give good. more than you think you should is one. Uh, yeah. I got just one more, I promise. Okay. Uh, and it's it's funny. So y'all might have to throw the, like the graphic on here, but it's don't be an asshole. Yeah. 
Ah. So an asshole. Spell it out. I know A-S-K-H-O-L-E. That, I know that term very yeah. well. There's so, somebody in my office that I affectionately termed as that. Yeah. Okay, so, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you it. say that, if you know that, somebody like usually pops to mind. Yeah. Right? And so uh, this guy named Chris Tuff wrote a book about save your asks, like saving yeah. the asks. And it can be, uh, or it can seem, and for a lot of people, I think people that aren't believers, honestly, are wired to be credit debit. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like very transactional. Yep. Now yeah. we love, we know Corinthians says love, love keeps works. no record. Exactly. Right. Yep. And so I don't count the amount of times my wife unloads the dishwasher right, and she's dude. counting the amount of times I take out the track. Like I just try to love her. Yeah. Yes. And so, but the way that relates to business is, um, in the world and we're, cause we're in it. We're yes. not, it's not, we're, I don't just work with, yeah. you know, people that are on fire for God. Right. I mean, a lot of them are, but that right. ain't the, the total client makeup. Right. Uh, the point is, in this transactional world that we live in sometimes, yeah. uh, it is important to save your asks. Yeah. Now, my friends know me Good. as like, I'm going to ask. Sure. Like, and not just always like not ask for big stuff, but I'm going to ask for like the little stuff. Um, but not being an asshole is not being this one-sided. Yeah. Like, you know, those people when their name pops up on your phone. You like you just let it go to voicemail because yeah. you know they need something. They're, they're about to ask me to help them move. Yeah, because I got a truck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or they're gonna say, "Hey, I'm looking for a rental." You're like, yeah. "I don't want you. To, I don't want to help you find a rental." <laughs> Joking. Work shout on out, your credit, bro. Shout out to the yeah. rentals. Yeah. Uh, but it's one sided. You know, looking for a favor or a plug. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do think you get what you ask for. Yeah. So it's okay to ask. Mm-hmm. Sure. Like my like people know me as, and I hope that this comes across uh, the right way of like, I am so far in the weeds of just like life that I, I couldn't begin to keep a record. Yeah. Right. Like I just, I hope maybe God will give me some discernment of like, man, that person's just, is, is just using you. Yeah. It's just one side. Right. But the cool thing is I don't even have to keep an account for no, that. Like I don't tabs. have to keep a record cause God's just going to take care of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so when somebody asks me for something, if I can do it, man, I Let's love do it. doing it. Yep. I love connecting people, yep. putting the right people in the right rooms. Yep. Uh, especially if I have nothing to gain from yes. it. That's my favorite. Yep. And so um, again, you get what you ask for, but save those asks for the right thing. Um, most people I know that get jobs, uh, it's not because they submitted a resume. It's because they knew somebody who knew yeah. the hiring person. That's right. And so when you're in that position, you need that ask. Like that's when you save it for. for yeah. sure. Um And so that's just some some kind of Gee, quick fire it, man. tips. Those are man. so powerful, man. But I was expecting just one or two. No, was like, like, especially the last two play off each other. Yeah, <laughs> the last two play off each other. Man, you outgive other people not because you're trying to keep a record. It's just because that's who we are. Yeah. That's because of who, what God's done for us. So that's what we're going to do for us. Like man. And yeah. And you're exactly right. Like when it comes to money, I have like this very interesting relationship with money. Yeah. This is like what Paul said, man, I've been brought low. I've been, I've been high. Um, like I've been, I can go back. Yeah. I told somebody this other day, like I could go back to forest estates, trailer park on Burt Coons road. Yep. And I could, I could, I could get it all again. Yes. With his favor, I could, yep. we can do all things. Right. Yep. So I could go back to that. Um, so for me, the more money we make, the bigger our business is, the more yep. clients we get, yep. that allows me to just give more. Yep. Yeah. And, exactly. But you gotta be a steward in the th- small yeah. to be able to be a great steward in the large. Right. And so, um, always going to have a gift gifting mindset. Uh, and I, lo- man, I love when people hit me, I, you know, yeah, just love, love being asked. That's it, man. I can so. do better at that. Yeah. My wife's love language is gifts. Yeah. That's probably like my least not that it's not my favorite. Sure, I just don't just think think about you it. Geared, geared you're just towards. thinking about Christmas in 2026. And I'm right. like, what's tomorrow? <laughs> that's uh, I mean, there, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. your birthday tomorrow? Oh, sorry. Yeah. But look, we're going to end it out with some really heavy hitting questions. Come on. Okay. <laughs> so rapid fire. He does not know that these are coming. And uh, I'm going to hit it off really hard for the first one. Um, Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase? Jefferson. Okay. Love it. Go ahead. Jets. Hit you with one. Uh, so makes well me hungry. Night. Canes or Chick-fil-A? Canes. Hot sauce in the cane sauce. They're starting the, to ask you for that now. Do you want ketchup or hot sauce? You notice that? No, because I've always asked. It's for, already, they've always really? had hot sauce. Louis, it's it. Louisiana hot sauce. Best hot sauce on That's earth. Way to do it. Shout out. Sponsor of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Thank um, you. And you pour it in the cane sauce. Oh. Mix it up. And then if you're feeling a little spicy, take the other packet, drizzle it on the tenders. Oh, I have goodness. not gone that far yet. Sounds like I like that. I really it. like uh, canes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. LeBron or MJ? MJ. Oh, bro, that was my question. Um, <laughs> you can use one of mine. Disney or Universal? Even though you, you literally just went well, I to I just my- had to make that choice. We <laughs> yeah. went to Universal. Okay. So you made that pick? Yeah. Okay. Big Harry Potter guy. Gryffindor. Oh, Dude, yeah, oh Gryffindor. Yeah. Okay. Hagrid's. With a hint, with a, uh, what did we say? With a hint of Slytherin. 
That's what Does my, my friends. Does anyone ever say Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff? It's like, are you? What house are you? Like, no, what are those people? I took a test no. online. I was Hufflepuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. and I'm admitting it. I could see that. You know. Anyway, I dated some girls that were Hufflepuffs for sure. <laughs> <laughs> shout out! I'm not going to shout them out. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. All right, so beach vacation or like a city vacation? Mm, beach. Okay. With a caveat of like, I'm not in the best shape. So I'd like to be in better shape. Probably make make the beach more fun if I was just yeah, like yeah, running yeah. up and right. down the beach. I hear you. Shirtless. Bay watching it. But yeah. we're not doing that. Gotcha. gotcha. Still, <laughs> still great. That's okay. I'm getting there. Uh, last last one. one. NFL or college football? Oh, man. I know, man. Tough, huh? I, was a, I, lo- I love that one. But it's, I'm going to go college football because the marching band. Ah, so to yeah, me, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. there was a saying from the one of the best movies ever created. It's called Drumline. Yes, sir. Nick um, Cannon, shout out. And halftime is game time. Yeah. And so there's like this running joke among bandies that, uh, you know, halftime is our game time. And so I get to experience, I think, a different side of college football that most yeah. people don't even care about. Yeah, right. for sure. Um, and you know, like, oh, the band's great, but it's like, I know when I can hear when they mess up. Yeah. I see when they mess up. Yeah. Uh, but also hear when it's like, that's really, really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I have a different appreciation for college football by way of that marching band. I Love took it. my boys to their first football, first LSU game this past weekend. Let's go. And so Lucas's favorite part mm-hmm. was Grambling's halftime show. Oh, man. Oh, so it was one. just pretty cool yeah. to see. Yeah. yeah. Like him loving that. Well, there's but. the, the, the band is awesome. I think people, I think most people know LSU's band is incredible, but yeah. they actually do sectional warm ups before the game yeah. that you can go to. Oh, like if he cool. cares about I need to do, trumpet yeah, he or he cares that. about the drum line, like yeah. you can go see it. It's a lot of fun. That's cool. Yeah. You so, can bet Miles' Instagram stories before the game. Or, yeah. You could just watch my Instagram because it's like straight yes. drum line. Yes. It's like me trying to steal some sticks so I can just get hyped with them. Yeah. Glory days. Well, man, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, like that awesome. was so much good stuff, man. It'll take me a little while to digest it. I think it's going to be really helpful for a lot of people. Awesome, man. Stuff, man. Well, I appreciate y'all having us. I know you two guys are just uh, just solid, solid men, man, man doing, doing. doing the Lord's work too. Uh, and so I'm encouraged that you guys would consider me to, to be on here, man. It Absolutely. means a lot. Glad to have you. So, and glad to have all you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Tune in next time. See you.